If you've never seen a goat up close before and want nightmares for the rest of your life, check this out. Their eyes are a super unique shape. Today we're on Cambry's parents' farm. They have goats, they have chickens, they have fruit trees, and their only source of water is a well that's hundreds of feet below the surface of the ground. The water is brought to the surface by an electric pump. If there's no electricity, then there's no water, which is a pretty big deal. Today we're gonna fix that problem with the largest power bank Anchor has ever made called the Anchor Solex F3800. And we're gonna back up almost the entire house with that singular battery. Let's get started. The first step into hooking this Anchor power bank up to the house, the largest power bank Anchor's ever made, is to find the electrical panel. The circuit panel is where all the power comes in from the grid and gets divvied out to all the different appliances, outlets, and light switches. The problem for us here in this house is that the electrical panel is inside a small little closet on one end of the house, and where we wanna put the battery bank is in the garage on the other end of the house. So to get the Anchor Solex F3800 working, we have to run some wires. The reason we want to store the battery bank in the garage is because this generator plug we're installing is universal and can be used for any kind of power generator up to 8,000 watts. Whether that be battery, gas generators, diesel generators, hydrogen, fusion, kyber crystals, or leprechauns, if it makes 8,000 watts, it'll work with this system. But some of those electricity producers, like the gas-burning generators or the leprechauns, you don't want inside of the house. With our plug mounted in the garage, it just leaves us with more options down the road. With our orange wire ran through the attic and down to the control panel, now would be a good time to mention that the Anchor Solex F3800 can be a standalone battery backup system all by itself. It has six plugs on the side, including two 240 volt plugs that are powerful enough to charge up an electric vehicle. Plus it has three USB-C, two USB-A, and accepts up to 2400 watts of solar inputs. I could just leave it in the garage all by itself, and even plug the 240 volt water pump directly into the unit, but I like doing things the hard way. It's just kind of cool to have the whole house powered up, and this thing can output 6,000 watts through this generator plug. Battery tech has improved quite a bit over the last few years. The Anchor Solex 3800 is a lithium iron phosphate, and can handle daily use for 10 years and has the ability to be expanded from 3.8 kilowatt hours to 23 kilowatt hours, which is a ridiculous amount of juice. Let's get back to the control panel though. We've installed this new lower panel called a transfer switch. This one is called the Reliance ProTran 2. The top panel is for the grid, but we've taken one wire from the breaker, run it through the transfer switch, so now we can choose whether these 10 circuits run off grid power or run off our Anchor Solex F3800 in the garage. Adding a transfer switch or generator plug is a very common thing, and a lot of electricians can do it. Electrical panels are definitely not something you wanna mess around with if you don't know what you're doing. Step into my closet for a second, and I'll show you how this works. Since we have the cover off of this panel, it's easier to see what's going on. Normally, we have power flowing in from the grid through a breaker and then out to a load like this. But what we've done is installed a secondary panel down here that's powered off of the battery. Remember, we dropped this orange cable down through the attic, and that's bringing power from the battery we have inside of the garage. So this row of switches right here is able to decide if we want power from the grid or if we want power from the generator, which is the Anchor Solex. So if we swap all of these switches over, we are now running fully off of the battery. The battery juice comes in through the cable we installed, hits the breaker here, and then goes out to the load that's already pre-wired inside of the house. The Anchor Solex battery already has a bunch of plugs on it, so it can be a standalone system, but if you want it to be a home backup, a transfer switch is a necessity. 
It keeps the power from the battery from flowing out to the grid and keeps it here in a home. With all the breakers flipped to be running purely on battery backup, we're using about 800 watts worth of power. And every now and then it jumps up to 2300 watts because that's when the water pump turns on. Cambry's mom is out watering the garden right now. And there's a reserve tank under the house that needs to be replenished by that pump. So that means that everything is working and if the grid ever goes down, there's still water at this house. At some point in the future, I will mount solar panels to the roof so this thing can just run perpetually, but we don't have enough time for that today. But I will leave some folding solar panels behind so it can still be charged up in emergencies. If you want one of these massive battery solutions for your own home or RV, Anchor has a Kickstarter going right now with massive 45% off super early bird discounts. And if you're a slightly slower bird, there's still 35% discounts. I'll leave a link for that down in the description. The early bird gets the worm. Hit that thumbs up button or the goats are gonna haunt your dreams forever. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.